the Lord. Every praise. How many know we've got a lot to be thankful for today? Amen. Today is Thanksgiving, and we are in church. Lord, have mercy. We could have been home by the fireplace, listening to the fire crackle, pop, chestnuts, roasting. Okay, all right, Pastor. All right. We could be there, but we're here in the house of the Lord celebrating God. Amen? We've got a lot to be thankful for. Glory to your name. Right now we have Minister Sunkins coming. He's going to take us to the throne of grace. Can we say amen for him? Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, with no complaining. Hallelujah. We can even lift our hands in the sanctuary without wrath or doubting. We thank you, Lord, today. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Everything we do, we want to please you, Father. For you have made all things, and we were made for your pleasure. So we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts, with thanksgiving on our minds, with thanksgiving in our spirit. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord that you've allowed us to come into your presence. Hallelujah, where there's fullness of joy. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the crown of thorns. Thank you, Jesus, for the nail-scarred hands. Thank you, Jesus, for rising again. Thank you that we have life and we have it more abundantly. We thank you, Lord, that you're awesome in our hearts. You're awesome in our minds. You're awesome in our, on our job. You're awesome in our families. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise because you're worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to receive glory. You are worthy to receive honor. You are worthy to receive praise. So we give you thanks for life itself. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for healing us. We thank you, Lord, for prosperity in every area of our lives. So today, not only today, but every day, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks with our praise. We give you thanks with our mouth. We give you thanks with our lives. We give you thanks even with our finances. We love you today. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise in the mighty, majestic, healing, saving name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. Oh, I just thank God for so loving us. Amen. He's a soul lover. Right now we have coming missionary Medoff who's going to take us. Uh, she's going to read the scripture for today. The word of God. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. I'm going to be reading from the book of First Chronicles, 16th chapter, starting with verse 8. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and reading of his word. Amen. Wonderful word of God. Yeah. Right now, we're going to go back to worshiping the Lord. Amen. This is time for praise and worship. Our service is now turned back over into the hands of our co-pastor, Dr. Hess. Can we say amen? Come on, let's give the Lord praise on today. Come on, come on. This is the day the Lord has made. Listen, you have gotten up this morning, so you might as well give him your best praise. Come on and put those hands together as we love on the Lord today. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, let's say good morning to the Lord.
lift up the name of the Lord because he's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the glory. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord. Those hands that you're going to be eating breakfast with later on today. Turkey. Amen. I'm going to need you to lift them up to the Lord real high. Give him praise, Lord, because he's worthy of the praise.
Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of God. Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, we must never forget that. Amen. Amen. Right now we're going to uh, have our pastor come. Can we say, and we greet him by giving him a hearty amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody Google the word hearty for me. That didn't seem like a hearty to me. But amen. If you say it heartily, amen. Praise God. Let us say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be here? Amen. amen. I'd rather be here than be in the best hospital in the world. Amen. I'd rather be here than to be in the fanciest mortuary. Amen. With drive through viewing. Amen. I'd rather be here. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and thank the Lord for blessing you to be here on today. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all of our family here, our church family, and those of you that are present on today, and those that are listening over the radio this afternoon, we will give you a time when this will be aired on today. We're actually recording it now, and we will air it later on today before the service is over. We'll let you know what time it will be airing. And I thank God and pray for those that are in the prison. I, mean, I received a wonderful letter on Tuesday, I think it was, of this week. And last week we had a little problem with our antenna in Jackson, and the signal was not going out strong. And uh, someone was kind enough from the prison, inside of the prison, to send me a note. And I'll give you the letter, Elder Hess. Matter of fact, it was addressed to you, but I didn't see that it was said junior on there. Amen. And uh, that's how it is when you had a first same name, amen, except for the junior. I'm, I'm not a doctor, amen. I'm just, I'm just a nurse. I'm just, amen, <laughs> praise God. Ah, here we go, here we go, here we go. I see we're on, we on a journey today. And uh, man had said he had been in another prison for about 25 years and was just recently transferred to 3100 Cooper in the city of Jackson. And he was turning his dial and he ran upon our signal. We have a tower about two or three thousand yards away from the prison and we send the signal in and uh, he had started listening and on last week for a couple of days he was not able to get it and he became concerned and wrote a beautiful letter. He said he really enjoyed melodies from the heart. He enjoyed the singing and the teaching. Amen. And uh, we're reaching everybody. Amen. We're reaching a lot of people. And so he was just concerned that we had lowered the signal or that we weren't there anymore. So I just want him to know today, his name is Cletus. Cletus, uh, if you're listening, I want you to know we got your letter and we're going to be responding to you. And for all of those that are in the Jackson Correctional Facilities, we're praying for you. Those that are immobile and you're not able to get out, nursing homes or wherever you are on today. Some of you um, watch us by Ustream. Wherever you are today, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving and that the Lord would bless you. Amen. We thank God that we have visitors on today. Again, we have people here today from Minnesota, from uh, Central Michigan, and from uh, Bloomington, Illinois, and got some people here from the hood. Let me see my hood people one more time. Amen. All right. Got some people over here from the hood, and uh, got people here from Jackson. Amen. Anybody here from Kalamazoo yet? All right, we have guests from other denominations. Some of you have made it your business over the last several years to be here every Thanksgiving. And uh, don't think we don't take note. We do take note. Amen. And we thank God for you um, being a part of this service on today. And uh, we ask you to come and be with us for one hour. One hour. And so we're doing good. Uh, I've got a little more time to squall than I thought I had. Amen. I hadn't planned on squalling today, but... Um, we'll see what the Lord says. I just want to get the word out to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. In the book of St. Luke, the 17th chapter, thank God for our co-pastor and our wives and elders that's here, each of you. I'm just glad to be here. Amen. Amen. If you've had many birthdays as I've had, you... You're just glad to be here. Amen. St. Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 12. 
It says, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him, how many men? Ten men that were lepers. They had to stand, or they stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices, and they lifted up their voices collectively. All of them lifted up their voices and said, Jesus. One possibly said, Jesus. Another one possibly said, Master. Another one might have said, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, not when he saw him, but when he saw them, he said unto who? Them. Go show yourselves, not yourself, but go show yourselves collectively, all of you all. Go show yourselves unto the priests. It came to pass that as he went, as they went collectively, he was cleansed. They were cleansed collectively. Oh, here's where the mood changes. And one of them, I could say only one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Then he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus said, and Jesus answering said, he asked the question, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that glorified, that returned to give God, to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he, or he alone, said unto him, or him alone, get up, arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. And uh, just for the sake of having a title on today, I want to just ask the question, can you thank him before you can see it? Can you thank him before you can see it. I could spend all of my 20, 25 minutes just working on almost every word in this passage of scripture on today. And as we look, I was looking at the worship songs and we was talking about things that we can do collectively. Just kept saying we. There's some things that God does, he does collectively. He does it for a group. And uh, there are responses, different responses to what has been done collectively. In other words, the whole has benefited from it, but the response from the whole is never the same. But I want to know today, can you thank him, not after, but before, you can see it. What is it? What is this it that we're talking about? Whatever it is that you're praying and asking the Lord to do for you. Whatever that two-letter word, it, whatever it means to you, I'm asking you today, can you thank him before you can see it? That's what I want to know today. When you come to a setting such as this, and I can peruse the congregation and many of you all situations, I know what it is that you're going through. And uh, I know that some of you are going through some things that you hadn't planned on having to deal with on Thanksgiving. Yes, Amen. Some are financial and some are spiritual, some are uh, physical issues and things. Last week that you didn't think that you'd have to be thinking about on today, Thanksgiving. So I know that there are some things that some of you are a little in reserve today because your heart may be heavy. Uh, somebody say something back to me a little bit. Amen. Praise God. Uh, but I want to pose the question again. Uh, can you, uh, not can we, but can you, can you thank him uh, before you can see it, whatever that it is? Whatever that solution, whatever that thing that you're asking the Lord to do for you, can you thank him? My mind just went back to 
Kmart and the layaway plan at Kmart. I don't know why I'm getting sidetracked like this, but amen. Sometimes we see something, we can't really afford it. We don't know how we're going to get it. So uh, they put it on the layaway. Anybody know what the layaway is? All right, I'm getting sidetracked here. Amen. Uh, even though you only put $2 on it, amen, you go back and start talking about what you just bought, what, what you just bought. You haven't received it yet, but you get excited about it. Somebody just waved to me. That's all. Amen. Amen. We got to connect here some way. Uh, St. Luke, the 17th chapter, it shows us the critical importance of demonstrating gratitude. A lot of people have this thing called gratitude. A lot of people have a spirit of thanksgiving. The problem is thanksgiving and gratitude is a verb, and it must, it's an action word. It must be demonstrated. It must be demonstrated. It's kind of like love. Amen. I, I keep getting sad. You know, you, you say you love your husband or you say you love your wife, but you won't cook. You won't. Amen. Praise God. Lord, have mercy. Won't open up the car, though. That's my wife. She stepped out. Amen. So I, I can talk on this a little while. She stepped out. Amen. Uh huh. But some things must be demonstrated. Gratitude must be demonstrated. Here in Luke's passage of this miracle, it mainly focuses on the response of the Samaritan. And many times we badger and we badmouth the other nine. And the question always pops up, where are, where are the nine? So we take 45 minutes zeroing in on the nine. Amen? As if they just had no faith at all. But they did have faith. All ten of them had faith. Amen. And so as uh, we look at this scripture, it's probably the most popular Thanksgiving Day text of all times. I preached this on Thanksgiving before. I'm trying to go a little bit different on today. Uh, I want to step inside of this story just, just for about 15 more minutes because there's something deep here. There's something profound that we need to see in the next 15 minutes. Here, Jesus met 10 men who had contracted the most dreaded disease of their day. Leprosy is caused by a bacteria similar to the Ebola virus. Uh, leprosy reprograms the body. It goes into the blood and attacks the cellular level so that the cells in the body actually ends up attacking itself. And when leprosy gets into a person, it leaves the body very vulnerable. And uh, there are many infections that come along very similar to what we call Ebola today. Leprosy back in the day could take 30 years to run its course. Uh, all of those 30 years would be causing physical damage to the body. I'm just trying to give you a little background here. So there was a physical condition. Then you add the emotional and the psychological trauma and the pain that went along with being put outside of the city, taken away from your family, uh, being immobilized. And when you look and you find that uh, you have to leave your, your family, have to leave your loved ones. You can't hug your children. You can't be around your family. They were cut off from people. At the first sign of the disease called leprosy, a leper was immediately quarantined outside of the city. That leper was removed from the family and community except for other lepers. Amen. A leper would possibly never again uh, be in the presence of his family or her family. Lepers were required by the law to announce their presence at a distance. Lepers were required by the law to warn those who approached them that they were unclean. Amen. How would you like to have to walk down the street, amen, and people say good morning, you have to say unclean, unclean. 
Praise God. Unclean. I'm unapproachable. I'm unapproachable. You can't even speak to me. That's what happened to the lepers. All human contact was severed, except for the sad uh, being around those others that had leprosies. They were untouchable, but they banded together in their suffering. There's a saying that misery loves company. So we have these 10 lepers. A leper had to live like that. But somehow, everybody say somehow, they saw Jesus. They identified Jesus in their state of leprosy. They had heard about Jesus. They had heard about his authority. They had heard about how he had healed the sick and how he had even raised the dead. And when they saw Jesus, one howl hollered out, Jesus. Another one hollered out, Master. And all together they hollered out, have mercy on us. They shouted across from a distance. Instead of saying unclean, they said, have mercy on us. They were not supposed to say, have mercy on us. They were supposed to be warning Jesus not to come near them. But somehow they had heard about who this man Jesus, I wish somebody would help me here today. So they shouted across the distance, mercy, mercy, have mercy on us. Don't do us like the others have done us. But have mercy upon us. And they hear back from Jesus something that they didn't hear. Jesus responded and said, go. They said, Jesus, have mercy on us. We're unclean. Jesus responded and said, go. Get on up out of here. Go show yourself to the priest. Everybody knew that the local priest was also the appointed health inspector. If a person was stricken with an infectious disease and that person was healed, he was required by law to report to the priest. And the priest would inspect the body and make the final call. I see the doctor just walked in a few minutes ago. Bless the holidays. Amen. And if the priest gave the person that had been sick the all clear, you know how the doctor give you a note to go back to work. That once diseased person was free to re-enter society. This is the first re-entry program. Y'all not going to work with me today. Uh-huh. The person that was sick, the person that had leprosy, was required by law to go show himself to the priest. But the person that had leprosy was not required or commanded to say thank you. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I ain't got a long time, so y'all going to have to... Y'all got to step it up a little bit out there. Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. Notice Jesus didn't say you're healed. He just said, go. That's why I want to talk about can you thank him before you can see it. Jesus said, go. Come out of that place where you are. He tells them to by faith Behave as though you have already been cured. Faith. Before you could see it, they looked down and their hands were still damaged. They looked down at their toes. Their toes were still damaged. The odor and all of that. I didn't get into all that because this is Thanksgiving. But a whole lot went on with lepers. All of that was still going on. But Jesus said, go. So all ten of them got up out of there. Instead of us badgering the nine, all ten of them walk by faith. And the Bible said, as not he went, but as, as they went. Faith will have you moving when you can't see where you're going. These leprous men, all ten of these leprous men, looked at their body. They looked at each other. Nothing had changed according to the physical. 
The hands were still the same. Everything was still the same. Things didn't seem to be any better, didn't look any better. But when Jesus said go, they got up out of there. They broke the law. You talk about civil disobedience. They were supposed to be in the leper camp, but Jesus said go. And while they were still looking like they were looking and feeling like they were feeling, they got up and started going. And the Bible says, and as they went, they were healed. I want to ask you today, right, well, let's forget about the, I'm talking about your problem, whatever your situation is today. Can you by faith get up and begin to move as if it's already done? They knew enough about Jesus that he had done this kind of test of faith before. They had heard enough about Jesus to know that he wasn't just playing some cruel game with them. They knew that God had worked many mighty works through Jesus. So they trusted in Jesus' command. So they set off in search of the priests. Now they were violating the law. You were not supposed to go and see the priest until you saw some evidence. Oh, thank God for Hebrews 11 and 1. Y'all going to make me work here today. Oh, boy. Now faith. Not future faith, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence. That's the evidence. That's all the evidence you need. All you need is some faith. When Jesus said go, that's all that you need. I'm going to leave y'all alone a few minutes here. If you wait until your problems are over to start walking in faith, you're going to miss the power of God in your circumstances. You're going to give the credit to the wrong person. If you wait until you hear, I hear so many people say, bro, pastor, I want to be saved. I'm coming to church. I'm trying to wait for a sale to buy me a new suit, and I'm coming. <laughs> got to get myself together before I come. I got to stop doing this. I got to stop doing that before I come. But that will not show the power of God if you wait until you handle all those things yourself. But when you get up in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your problem, in the midst of your suffering, and say, I'm going where Jesus say go. Uh, I'm going to throw a curve in here right quick, and I'm going to get on back here. Sometimes we say, as soon as I get some money, I'm going to pay my tithes. Just soon, just soon. Uh, just as soon. That would be a good excuse. It was on the dollar amount, but it's not on the dollar amount. It's on the percentage amount. Lord, have mercy. So nothing from nothing equals nothing. So if you don't have anything, then you're not required. But if you have anything, well, it's the widow's might. No matter. Let me get back on track here. Sometimes we say, Lord, if you solve this problem, Lord, I got a praise on the inside that I'm reserving until after you solve my problem. I'm here to tell you, you can jump start the process of having your problem solved by praising him in advance. You don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout right now. Sometimes Jesus will give us one of those in spite of opportunities. Can you praise him in spite of? Your heart is broken. Can you praise him in spite of? All you may have are some ice cubes in the refrigerator. Can you praise him in spite of? Your back hurting, your leg hurting. I want to know, can you praise him in advance? Can you praise him before you can see the results? Can you trust him when you can't praise him? Can you trust him beyond what you can see? God has some things that he's holding in store for you. All of a sudden, this pitiful band of lepers, they're limping their way to the priests in obedience because Jesus said go. 
And the Bible reports in one of those sentences there that as they went, they were healed. Glory to God. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Ah, oh, I need some of the old people here on the day. Back in the day, no food in the house. Chickens out in the yard, pecking in the dirt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But Big Mama would go in there and fix the table. She'd look at the empty table. And she'd look at the chicken out in the yard. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But by faith, she would start setting the table while the chicken lived. While you're going through what you're going through, can you praise him? Can you give him a victory praise while you're going through whatever you're going through? Because weeping may endure for the night. Ella has said at the beginning of November, you, you gave us a challenge. You told us to track our blessings. Lord have mercy. You said every day in November to write down something that you're thankful for. Glory to God. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. We're so busy looking at what we don't have when we ought to be looking at what God has already done. You shortchange yourself when you only count what you can see. But there are some things that you can add on to your blessings that you don't see. Somewhere on his way to the priest, this one man not only was healed, because all ten were healed, but this one man went further than being healed. He was made whole. He counted his blessings one by one. Oh, the psalm said, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. Then you'll see what the Lord has done. Oh, Lord have mercy. While the other nine was speaking Hebrew, there was one Samaritan that was speaking Ebonics. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Thank you. When Elder Hess was preaching on last Sunday, I noticed it said, we be. That's Ebonics. Lord have mercy. We be of Abraham's seed. That's Ebonics in the Old Testament. Y'all ain't saying that to me all today. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm so glad that I've learned how to walk by faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. My last verse here. 15th and 16th verse, if you bring it up for me, there it talks about he returned and with a loud voice he gave glory to God. With a loud voice. The Greek word is megas, like a megaphone. Lord have mercy. He made a, you know, we got these cute little patty cake praises that we like to give. So they say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Like the Lord hasn't done anything. But your praise is supposed to be based upon the degree of what the Lord has brought you from. When I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that God's been good to me. Oh, when I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But oh, the master, the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And then from the waters, he lifted me. Now save, safe am I. It was love that lifted those ten 
but nine went on on their own way too dignified too sophisticated to give God a loud praise but this one man that should not have been included in the crowd because the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along together but they found themselves in the same circumstance and along came Jesus and delivered all ten of them but only one turned around one was only grateful enough one was only thankful enough to raise their hands and stand on their feet and give God the glory come on and tell them thank you thank you thank you thank you oh, I'm not going to badger y'all today you cannot have faith and, show, and not show gratitude. You cannot have faith and not show gratitude. In order to express what you have, it must be expressed through gratitude. When you have faith, faith is something that must be spoken, it must be expressed in some way or another. And I know people say, you know, I'm just, I'm just quiet that way. I'm just, I'm just, I see you all at the park. I see you all in the grocery store. I see you when the blue light special come on. Oh boy. Thank you. We've got to demonstrate, everybody standing. We've got to demonstrate our gratitude. Again, before the Lord brings something to a culmination, I was listening to the sermon that you put on this week. All week long, we've been playing sermons about Thanksgiving. And in 2011, and I remember that service as if it was yesterday, and we were there on Thanksgiving Day, just like this. And I had already told a couple of brothers, I said, when I give you the cue, I want you to bring out these graphs. And they brought out the renderings and the drawings of this church. And I said, I looked to my right. And I began to explain what God was going to do. And now look and see what the Lord has done. We got a right to thank him. See, the first thing that gets attacked is your memory. When the devil wants to destroy you, he works on your memory. He wants you to forget all of the benefits and what God has done for you. Some of us, we've done things where instead of receiving a letter from the prisoner, we could have been the person writing the letter. But we just didn't get caught. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for my healing. I got some pain, but I want to thank you for my healing. Got some bills that I left on the table, but I want to thank you, Lord, that you're going to help me to pay those bills. Lord, I got some children in trouble today, but I'm believing you by faith that you're going to help them. You're going to get them blessed. You're going to get them released. You're going to get them saved. You're going to work on them. So I just want to thank you in advance. Come on and praise him in advance. We have a moral obligation. I say we have a moral obligation to express our gratitude to him for what he has done. Thanksgiving Day is an American holiday. It's not expressed all over the world. The Canadians already had their Thanksgiving. I believe they have theirs in September or October. They've already had theirs. They're not celebrating Thanksgiving in Canada. They're not celebrating Thanksgiving around the world. But here in the United States of America, we have this wonderful opportunity to thank God collectively and publicly. And I praise God on today. Come on and give the Lord one more hand of praise. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. We believe in God for everything. But we've got to believe him by praising him, by glorifying him, and being thankful. God bless you, you may be seated in the house of the Lord on today. That's what the Lord gave me for this Thanksgiving 2000.
and 14. I want you to go back and look that scripture over. See if you can get you another meal out of it. Praise God. Every word in there speaks volumes. And I'm so grateful and so thankful for the blessings of the Lord. Amen. I pray that the Lord would bless each of you on today to be able to enjoy Thanksgiving with family and friends. Or if you're all alone, amen. You've got the Lord there with you. Praise God. And just be thankful. Be grateful. Be grateful for what the Lord has done. And I found out that people that express gratitude, uh, you as a human being, when you do something for someone and uh, they feel as if they're entitled to what it is that they really have, they're not entitled to it, but they feel that they're entitled to it. And then you, you go over and beyond and you bless a person or you do something kind to a person. Amen. It, 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 it goes a little easier when the person say thank you. Amen. Praise God. Uh, when they snatch it out your hand, amen, uh, that kind of puts a little cold water on it. I, I know I'm losing y'all right? after, this, after this wonderful message. Kind of like eating, eating a Thanksgiving meal and somebody bring out a burnt, burnt sweet potato pie. Now. Amen. So, so I'm just going to stop it. I'm going to stop it right here. Amen. God bless you on today. I can just, I can see God. I can, I can see God as, as he blesses us. And we just keep on as if, as if it was luck, as if it was you know, it just had to happen because of who we are. Praise God. Listen, listen. The Lord wants to help us. And as we worship him and as we give him the thanks and give him the glory, he will in turn turn around and bless us again. Come on and clap your hands and tell the Lord.